with me I have Rabbi Mindy Lent and he is taking us through the great festivals of the Jewish year and one of the feasts that is probably one of the harder ones to understand is Purim. So, okay. Purim is um, the most festive time um, in the Jewish calendar, not as a an, uh, an Old Testament festival, um, as, a, as in a formal feast, um, but it's a, a really carnival atmosphere, Purim. Because Purim t tells us the story of um, going back into um, Persia a couple of thousand years, um, when the evil Haman had convinced he was an advisor to Ahasuerus, Ahasuerus, um, to, uh, to kill the Jews who were different. They were foreigners and not keeping the same kind of laws. Um, and the king went along with his plan and through a miraculous um, turn of events which looked entirely natural in that a new, king had, a new queen had to be appointed after he killed his first wife. She happened to be the niece of the great Jewish sage Mordechai. Um, and they managed to, you know, events unfolded in a way that she was able to um, tell the king that not only was Haman planning to kill the Jews, she herself was a Jewess, which was unknown at that point, um, and that she would be included in this mass murder of all the Jews. So quickly the tables turned, and the plans that Haman had to kill the Jews um, were turned over. The Jews were able to defend themselves, whereas previously that was illegal. Um, Haman himself was hanged on the gallows that he planned to hang Mordechai. Um, so it was a, a, a complete switch over and, and a turn of a nahapohu in Hebrew. Everything turned inside out. Um, and so um, laws uh, were established at the time that this would be commemorated every year by the reading of the scroll, uh, which we have here and, and we're happy to demonstrate soon. Um, we have the scroll of Esther, which we read at night and at day. We have a festive meal where it's customary to let your hair down a little bit in, in recognition of this miracle that, that all the Jews were able to um, defend themselves and, and turn the tables over there. Um, we have, um, it's a commandment to go and give charity and to spend more on the charity than you spend on, on your other gifts actually that you do. Um, and then gifts to, the, gifts to the needy, gifts to the poor, of actual f um, gifts to the poor and, and gifts of food to each other. Mm. Um, it's customary people like have a little bit of alcohol um, on the day. So that's why um, they end up letting their hair down as well. But it's, and it's to commemorate the fact that the miracles that were hidden, it looks like a natural sequence of events. So that's why people dress up and they wear costumes. Um, the masks to, ma to show that the miracle was, was not um, easily seen and it was, it was all very hidden. So Purim is a, an exceptionally happy and joyous time of the year. And in fact, one way of translating Purim would be carnival. It's Purim, a way, it's a way, it's to a describe way. Purim as yeah. carnival, Purim actually means lots because they drew, they drew lots on which day they were going to execute all the Jews. Mm. And so this is the day that it was planned for. It's the, the 14th day of the month of Adar. Mm. Um, so that's the day that we commemorate this um, by enjoying the fact that we're still, that we're still here. Okay. And you have brought with you an Esther scroll. I have indeed. Will you read some of it for us? We can read a little bit of the, um, of the scroll of Esther. This is a handwritten on, on parchment. I'll, uh, I'll read a couple of sentences. And of course, in most Bibles, they can find that as the Book of Esther. The Book of Esther, indeed. Mendy, thank you for bringing us to a moment in the history of the Bible, a moment long, long ago in the history of the Jewish people, and a day in the life of the Jewish people today. Absolutely, still alive today.